Hello and thank you for joining me. Today we are taking a trip down south to explore one of the most iconic Southern American dishes of all time. I'm talking biscuits and gravy. Having grown up in the South, this dish will always have a special place in my heart. It can take the edge off of any homesickness I might experience from time to time. I will be doing a pretty classic version and then adding a bit of a fancy tweak to give the video that click ability. Spoiler alert, it involves truffles. So let's get into it. Biscuits and gravy is composed of two components, biscuits and gravy. Let's start with the biscuits first because we are cooking in alphabetical order today. I've made a lot of biscuits in my day. They were on the menu at one of the first proper gigs I had as a cook, so I got the chance to practice a lot. Shout out to Lisa in the tea house at the Botanical Gardens. Making biscuits requires a slightly delicate hand, but it is a worthwhile skill to acquire, especially if you love them as much as I do. For me, a fresh, well-made, buttery biscuit is even better than more complicated baked goods like croissants. American biscuits originate from the English scone and became something different due to the difference in ingredients that were available to the cooks. One special ingredient that you will often see when talking about biscuits is buttermilk. In the South, buttermilk biscuits are the standard. And that's what we are making today. If you can't find buttermilk where you live, don't panic. You can add one tablespoon of vinegar or lemon juice for every one cup of regular milk. The acid will curdle the milk slightly and result in a tangy liquid with a similar consistency to buttermilk. But that is about the only ingredient you might have an issue finding. The rest are pantry staples. So let's get measuring. This is a great recipe, so I hope you enjoy it. Starting with the dry ingredients, I have here one pound of all-purpose flour, that's about 454 grams. To that we add two tablespoons of sugar, about 24 grams, two teaspoons of salt, 12 grams, four and a half teaspoons of baking powder, about 22 grams, and lastly half a teaspoon of baking soda, about three grams. And for our wet ingredients, I have one and a half cups of buttermilk, that's about 330 grams, and 16 tablespoons of butter, about 225 grams cut into cubes. A special note for our wet ingredients, you want to keep them as cold as possible. Keeping your biscuit dough cold helps to keep your biscuits nice and flaky. Sometimes I put the butter in the freezer for a few minutes after cutting it into cubes to make sure it is nice and firm. So with our biscuit ingredients all measured out, it's time to put them together. There are several ways this can go down. I will often go the old-fashioned route and use a pastry blender like this for incorporating the butter into the dry mix, but I recently bought this used food processor to replace my sad old one, so I'm eager to use it out. Food processors are great for making pie, crust, and biscuits, but not completely necessary. You can also make great biscuits with just a pastry blender or even just a cup of forks. But either way, we want to start by blending our cold butter into our dry mix. I start by putting my dry mix into the bowl of the food processor. With the dry mix in the bowl, I give the machine a couple pulses to make sure the salt and leavening agents are well distributed. Next, the cold butter cubes go in and I try to make sure they are spaced out nicely in the flour to make it as easy as possible for the machine to process. Now with the lid back on the machine, I'm going to use the pulse function to break up the butter in short burst. We want small pieces of butter throughout our dough, so we really don't want to just run the machine continuously, or we could ruin the texture of our biscuits. Now that our butter is broken up, we want to incorporate our buttermilk, and I might not need all of it, so I want to add it slowly. Again, we really don't want to overwork the dough, so I'm drizzling that buttermilk in while pulsing the machine just enough to make sure the liquid gets mixed in. We are looking for what we call in the biscuit making community a shaggy mass. And checking in, we can see we are getting close. Recipes will often say you want to see a dough come together. And what that means is that the dough will literally hold together. So you will see after enough buttermilk has been added that the mix is no longer floury or powdery. It will be a rough mix of clumpy bits of dough. And when you go in with your hand and squeeze it a bit, it should hold together just a little bit. This means the dough is ready to work into biscuits. Just to reiterate, it really shouldn't be a uniform mass. Loose bits are good. The loose bits will come together in the shaping process. With the dough at the right texture, I get it out onto the counter for shaping, dusting it first with a little bit of flour. Then I also give myself a little dusting of flour on top of the dough mass. And then I just try to bring all those loose pieces together with my hands into one mass. There are cracks and fissures, but the dough is still holding together. 
I'm just gently pressing the dough out with my hands into a rectangle about half an inch thick and twice as long as it is wide. Some people say you shouldn't use a rolling pin, but I think it's fine. Ultimately, you just don't want to overwork the dough and develop too much gluten. And you can overwork dough with your hands or a rolling pin, so it's just a matter of having a light touch, in my opinion. And even though I don't have much of a rectangle shape, I go in for my first letter fold, bringing the bottom third of the dough up over the middle third and then the top down over that. The lines will get sharper in the next two folds. So I just keep kneading the dough gently, giving myself a little dusting of flour if things are feeling sticky, and using quick touches. I get that dough back into a rectangle shape. Even after that one fold, the lines are already looking so much tighter. Then it's time for another letter fold, and you can see I also use the flat of my hand to straighten up the sides of the dough a bit before I start the knead again, switching back to the rolling pin for a bit just for fun. And once I get back to that rough rectangle shape, I give the dough one last letter fold. And now I roll the dough out to the same roughly rectangular shape, and then we are ready to cut the biscuits. If you look closely at the dough, you can see that it is not super smooth, but rather a scaly patchwork of dough. That is what you want, and it will mean that we end up with nice flaky biscuits. Now we pull out our tool, which in fancy restaurant talk we call ring molds, but in the south we call biscuit cutters. And I'm not sure what size this is, but I just picked it based on what looks good. We should be able to get about eight nice biscuits and a couple scrappy ones. After cutting the first round, I only managed to get six, but no worries, I can just take the leftover dough and gently press it back together, doing a little letter fold for a good measure, and then we cut a few more biscuits. The expert eye will be able to see that the second round of biscuits are a little less perfect than the first, but not even experts can tell once they are covered in gravy. And that's the last little bit of dough I don't usually have the heart to throw out, so I usually just squish it together and bake it off with the rest of them. And so now I just get all those biscuits loaded onto a sheet tray lined with a bit of parchment paper and quickly place them into an oven set to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius, or about 12 to 15 minutes depending on your oven. And as a side note, it's not too hot where I am, but if your kitchen is rather warm, or if you took a bit longer to work your dough, and the butter in the dough has gotten visibly a bit softer, you could put them in the fridge for about 10 minutes or so until they firm up again. If your butter is too soft when the biscuits go into the oven, it will reduce flakiness. Either way, after baking, you should have biscuits that look something like this. Bless my heart, don't those look nice? They look great but just make sure you give them five to 10 minutes to rest before trying to break into them. In fact, before we get started on the gravy, I better go ahead and sample one with some jam just to make sure they are okay. Mmm, mmm. Gravy or none, this is just a great biscuit recipe. But let's finish the dish as promised. Gravy is a word that can mean a few different things. In Jersey, it means pasta sauce. For many other Americans, gravy is a slightly thick brown sauce served with Thanksgiving turkey. But gravy in the South is generally a white to off-white creamy sauce served very often with, yes, biscuits. And today I'm going to make a sausage gravy. I have here the last of some breakfast sausages I made earlier this year and had in the freezer. After thawing those out, I just use my knife to score them slightly so I can peel off that casing. Maybe this is visually satisfying for some of you and unnerving for others. And after getting them out of their jackets, I just break them up with my hands roughly and now we are ready to cook. And I thought a cast iron skillet felt the most appropriate for this type of work. So I get that on the stove over medium heat and I start to render out and brown up my sausage a bit, breaking up any last big bits I see with my spoon. I also added just a little pinch of crushed chili because I like a little kick in my food. And now my sausage is looking nicely browned, so I drop the heat and use a slotted spoon to remove the meat from the pan. And with the pan heat dropped a little bit, I also go in with a couple spoons of minced yellow or white onion. And this sausage didn't give me too much fat or drippings, so I'll also add a couple spoons of butter to the pan. And once the onions have softened just a bit and taken some color on the edges, I'll also add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour to the pan and whisk it into the fat being careful with the heat so as not to brown the flour. 
That being said, we do want to cook it for a minute or two just to get rid of that raw taste of the flour. Then we add the creamy component, which in this case is about a cup of whole milk. And I just add that in a few pours, whisking in between to make sure I don't have any lumps. And a lot of people only use milk for their gravy, and that's fine, but I also like to add just a bit of chicken broth to finish the gravy. Now it's just a matter of letting that gravy come back to a simmer and cooking for about 5 or 10 minutes, seeing how thick it gets. Maybe you need another splash of broth or milk. I think this is looking pretty good, but I also want to give it a taste. I felt it needed another pinch of salt and a good grind of pepper. Now we can add our brown sausage back to the pan. Give it a stir and do one last check to make sure the thickness is right. It's worth noting that off heat the gravy will thicken up a bit so keep that in mind. So we have everything ready to go. And biscuits and gravy is very much a dish rooted in the poor working people of America. But today we are going to add a fancy ingredient to elevate this humble dish. I just so happened to be gifted some Australian black truffle scraps from work and I thought this would be the perfect place to use them up. I have some bits that are already sliced, so I just use my knife to julienne them a bit and then cast them into the gravy. Some bits are a little bit bigger, so I just use the grater to work them into the gravy. Looking pretty fancy already. I think we can plate now. One biscuit, yes. Two biscuits, yes. And hey, why not? Three biscuits slid open on the plate. And now it's time for our glorious gravy. Oh yeah, that's not looking bad at all. And why not gild the lily just a little bit more with some more truffle slices and a bit more grated truffle on top. Wow, this is a sight to behold. Is it tacky or clever? Maybe a bit of both. And as far as beverage pairing suggestions, in my opinion, there's only one thing to drink with such a dish. I will say I didn't intend to eat the whole thing, but here we are. And despite the coffee, after eating a plate of biscuits and gravy, there's really only one thing left to do. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at a down-home country dish. There are different styles of biscuits out there, but this is my favorite. And on that note, there are also many different styles of gravy, so don't feel like you have to make it my way. Some people religiously use bacon drippings. I'm sure you could also make a great vegetarian version. It's all about the love, y'all. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you let me know by hitting the thumbs up button on your screen and subscribe while you're at it. I've got a lot of good videos and many more to come. Drop a comment to let me know how you felt about this recipe and what I should try putting truffles on next. Only time will tell. Until next time, cheers!